Yeah. 935K Day, hip hop back in the day. No Ayala, but it's all about our special guest right now. He's actually a good friend of mine. I just found out he's a pH balanced with that alkaline water. <laughs> One half of the East Siders. Everybody, Trey D in the building. In the building, the general on location. What We're up, good. man? Man, you know what's happening, man. Still pushing this line. Got this General's List 2 out now, so I'm finna make noise again, man. We're gonna talk about the new album. I also want to get your opinion on some other things, but before we for do sure, that, for sure. uh, I figure we might as well start it off with this. Seven years ago today, Nate Dogg passed. Right. And I'm sure you had a relationship with Nate Dogg, right? You no, know I did. You know I did. Um, man, I can say so much about Nate. Uh what what you really liked about Nate Dogg, Noah? What 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 was special about Nate Dogg to you? The dope thing about Nate Dogg is I feel like one, he's from the West Coast, and that you know I'm biased when it comes to that. But two, I feel like he was really one of the first ones to really bring in like the rapping with the singing, the melodic. But he was still gangster. He was still you know represented, right? Because he definitely wasn't R and B when he came out. No, you're like oh no, he he's G'd up. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, like, right, right. So that's what I loved about him. Yeah, see, he had so many facets about him, man. You know, as far as you know his creativity he could he could adapt to pretty much any track you know and um and own it mm -hmm. you know and it was it was effortless with him because he never tried too hard it was something that was natural in him and you know you could always count on Nate Dogg to be right there with you whatever went down I went to jail one time with Nate Dogg oh shit <laughs> <laughs> We we had came back from overseas and uh, we had just got to the airport and Snoop, you know, he was hustling and bustling, getting up out of there. Shantae came and picked him up. And while they was pulling off one of them um, TSA, that's, ain't that what they call yep. them? One of them dudes was, hey, let me get your autograph, Snoop. Oh, Snoop, good to see you. And he just came from overseas for like a month and a half. He trying to get with his wife, get to the house, see his kid, you know. And um, so Shantae pulled off and he started calling Snoop all kind of bitch ass <laughs> motherfuckers and all that. And I'm looking, and I look, I look around. I said, man, come here, man. So, like, what's up, man, what's up? So he started bagging up, he pulled his mace out, I picked one of the little carts up, you pushed the luggage on and threw it at him. <laughs> and uh, he sprayed mace at me and everything, called his little partners on the walkie talkie, and me and Nate Dog ran and hopped in the limo. We we didn't even get out of the little taxiway. Police was bamming on the on window you. with guns, all that. We went to jail, Snoop Dogg belt us out. Well, he belt me out. I think Nate Dogg had some warrants or something. He had to go clear mm -hmm. or whatever. But we got out at about 3 in the morning and uh, went to the homie house, the homie who we always mention on records. He don't sell weed no more, so I can say his name. <laughs> Lil Blue. We went what up, Lil Blue? <laughs> we went to Lil Blue house and uh, got us like an ounce or something and made it back to where we was. And, I said, yeah, man, Nate, Nate, my God, man. You know, we done been all all over together. I done been with his family, with him to his family house in Mississippi and a couple of times. Oh, wow, man. Yeah. And he he still hasn't been. You can't replace him still. No, you can't. You can't know, nobody, like. Can't nobody replace Nate Dogg. Half of our, and I was tripping today because we were talking about it. I was like, half of our songs we play on K-Day, they're Nate Dogg songs. <sighs> Ain't that big. Ain't that Crazy. big. Because once, once everybody saw that that, that flavor was his and mm -hmm. he owned it like he did. Everybody wanted some of it to bless they, you know, bless mm -hmm. their projects. And that's what I don't see a lot today. People doing, you know, collaborations like that with someone based on the flavor that they bring. It's like they people name chasing, you know, right. like that now. It's like, oh, who hot? Let me get him on my stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I've never been a person like that. And, you know, I was I was just Real grateful when Nate called me one day when he was doing the um, G Funk Classic Volume mm -hmm. One, and he said, uh, "Trady, I need you to come to pair in my studio. I want you to do a song with me." And that was like in '94, '95, at the beginning of my career. Oh, so he and, showed you love early on. Oh, uh, I was like, "What, man? I got up there so fast, and we made the song a uh, bag of weed." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Nate Dogg who passed, uh, and yeah, I know you got the new album Generals List Two coming out. But on the Generals List One that came out last year, or a little bit over a year ago, you no, no, that was the third coming that came out. Oh, I'm sorry, the third ago. coming. That was the third coming. The original Generals List came out 
16 years ago Ooh. in 2002. Okay, my question was this though. Because we're talking about Nate Dogg who's passed, but then on the last album, one of my favorite songs was the song you had with Prodigy. Rest in peace. And that went hard R-D. too. Yeah, rest how did, in How did peace. that even happen, man? Because that had to be one of the last songs he recorded before he passed, right? It was. I believe it was. It was his last song he recorded on the West Coast, I think, most definitely. Mm-hmm. He came and did a feature with me after he had left um, from out in the hills. He was doing, <clears throat> excuse me, he was doing a feature out there. And he said, yeah, where you at? You know, and he, he, you know, he pulled up on me solo. You know, me and my homie G Black and Technique was there. And, you know, a couple more homies, and we embraced him, and we smoked and sipped a little something he did, rather, yeah. you know, and uh, we went up, you know, and that, that goes way back to when they was doing, when Mob Deep was doing murder music. Mm-hmm. I went to New York with Snoop, and we pushed up in the studio. He was doing a feature with him called Thou Shall Not Kill, and I was striking bars up while we was waiting for a Prodigy to get there. Havoc was there making the beat, and, um, when Prodigy came in, he saw me writing, mm-hmm. you know, we greeted each other, you know, Snoop introduced me. He said, what you over here writing? I said, yeah, I wrote something to this beat right here. And I spit it, he was like, oh, you you, you finna put that on there? And I looked at Dog, and Dog just like shrugged his shoulder like, you in, yep. you know and what I mean? And that's what's up too, because the thing <laughs> I liked about that song in your album so much is because it's like, you got somebody who who's gangster as fuck from the West Coast, but then you got somebody who's gangster as fuck from just a New York perspective, and right. that combination together was just yeah. You know, yeah. I always tell you this behind the scenes. I'm like, I grew up in the suburbs, right? So I love that gangster shit. Like <laughs> I be hearing that shit. Like I listen to your album or whatever. Yeah, man, I be wanting to make some bad decisions sometimes. Like, <laughs> like I'm about to hop That's in this whip right now for. and do something I shouldn't be doing. That's what I'm making for for everybody <laughs> that make bad decisions every once in a while. <laughs> So uh, General's List 2 is coming now. Yeah, yeah. It drops on the 16th. Uh-oh. And, uh, man. Oh, that's tomorrow, isn't it? What? What? Are you are you not aware? I'm yeah. aware now. It's the big explosion <laughs> takes place tomorrow. The world realigns itself. Okay. And, and you will have the gangsters of gangster shit, old and new, combined. You know, I got features from, of course, you know, my peers, Snoop Dogg and Dub C and Deadly Threat and Cognac the EXO and Corrupt. You know, they had to show up for me, you know, Goldie Loke. And uh, I got some new features. I got OT Genesis on there. Yeah, I got I like G OT, Perico. You know? I like G Perico yeah. too, yeah. And though he's not, no, well, I got um, B, uh, B-I-G-P-D, my homie Lil Trey D. And uh, of course, Crooked Eye. He's not new, but he never gets old. Man, he never. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He gets his credit, but I feel like he don't get his credit, though, at the yeah. same time. Yeah, oh, I give it to him in full, man. Mm-hmm. The guy's one of the dopest artists I ever met. So let me ask you this, then. What song are you just barring him up? Like, because you know, I'm a li- I like them lyrics. What, what song am I going to be like? This motherfucker, Trey Gangsta. DJ. Oh, I even like the title. Gangsta. I went on and gave it to him. I laid out the whole script. You know, and uh, top to bottom, it's it's it comparable to a song I did called General Vet, where I laid out the rules and regulations. <laughs> and I you feel know, like of, of a G, you know what I mean? And uh, it, but it's more it's more lyrically concise. Mm-hmm. It's it's you know each bar is like stitched in like a pair of five oh ones or something. You know right. what I'm saying? Like you know they. It, it's not gonna. It's not gonna never wear out or fade. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep, it's, it's, yep. You know, it's like I, I went in. You know, on a few songs on there. You know, I, you know. It's, I mean, just lyrically. You know, mostly I just tell tales of where I come from and how we get out. But sometimes, you know, I gotta let people know. You know, I know how to structure them, them patterns and the metaphors and yep. similes and yep. all that. Because I think of, people just like have the stigma like, oh, it's gangster rap. But it's like it, it's G, it's G'd up and it's gangster rap, but. It's still like Crooked Eyes. It's gangster MC. Like it's still like the MC aspect there. There's still bars there. There's got still... to keep it intricate. Yeah, man. Yeah, you got to keep it intricate because out here where we live, you know, gangsterism is more of a constant lifestyle mm-hmm. than a lot of places. So you see the same thing that the next artist from out this way sees. Pretty much, it's just how you tell the story. Is it you involved or is it somebody you watching that's involved? Do you 
know firsthand or is this second or third hand information that right. you um, administer to the people? And, you know, authenticity plays a big part out here. So very you, big part. So you know you got G's out here. So, but if that was the, if that was the barometer for every every artist to get validated, you'd have a lot more MCs out here. So you got to be able to you know sprinkle it with the Lowry's and the, you know the black pepper. <laughs> yeah, you know. What I mean? You know what we're talking about uh, the song Gangster, and you talk about rules and regulations. So I wanted to ask you this: Have you been keeping up with this Takashi Six Nine situation? Not keeping up, but it's just everywhere, so I, I really can't miss it. Right. You know, I, I see I see what's going on at everybody else. Now, thing. like, I'm not trying to cause no drama, but I was just curious to know your thoughts, because like, I heard Nipsey say in an interview, Nipsey was kind of just like, you know, that's like kind of for the kids. It's kind of what he said. He didn't say that verbatim like that, right. but that was kind of like what he said. Like, you know, he's just doing him. That's not really on our radar like that. Like, right. Are you are you really tripping off of that, or is anybody really tripping off that, or is that more just like, you know, the, these younger rappers and... Or is well, that like some? Well, you know, just 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 process it like this. If Nipsey said it was for the kids, how would I see it? Very true. Very true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very true. Because you know, Nipsey's a product of what we created. Mm-hmm. You know, at Doghouse. You know, and his influences are, you know, above. Takashi six nine and you know other people in that realm right, right now. So, you know, I'm I'm just now really getting off into the you know the Kevin Gates and the, you know the Migos mm-hmm. and the you know different artists like that out there. So Takashi six nine only came on my radar, you know, when I I wonder was he a Saguni first? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, limp wrist. You know what I mean? With 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 the hair like that. You know, I I wondered. You know what I mean? I'm like, what is this? Because I've been seeing people wearing purses and you know what I'm saying and all kind of di- different kind of dress codes. But then, you know, I saw him getting the altercation and you know he ran back out of the airport. Yep. And he stayed down. You know he just got barred from little uh, Jay Prince. I saw that last private, night. Private, yeah. yeah so, you know, <laughs> but he showed up and it wasn't nothing but grimy dudes up mm-hmm. and you know it was a bunch mm-hmm. of grimy. Houston don't play. You know what I mean? Right. You in the H town. You know it, it's gonna be some some thugs in the building. And you know he came up there and you know and showed up. So. I mean, whatever he doing, he doing it like he doing it, you know, and that's that's way off my radar. You know, what <laughs> so I mean? we ain't gonna see Trady in a blonde wig, um, or, or, or excuse me, a rainbow wig what, <laughs> with some what, with some rainbow teeth. Well, uh, if Steven Spielberg got a part for me, that's gonna hit me with like about ten, fifteen million, and he need me for about two or three minutes. I, I could probably slide one on. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna <laughs> I'm not but mad just, at you though. Just me naturally, you know, pushing around in public doing my thing. <laughs> now nah, you'll see the Jerry like, curl. Is that tra- is that you'll the see general? the Jerry curl again for you see some. Uh, yeah, uh, and love the, love the Takashi man. I'm not trying to uh, hate on him or anything because oh, no, his music no is like you know he he got that energy right now, so you can't be mad at that. Right, so, right. Do your thing, young yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, do your thing. We just ain't man. rocking no rainbow wigs, you know. <laughs> Yeah, um, so General's List 2 comes out tomorrow it's gonna be everywhere mm-hmm. um, what else do we need to know man well you just need to know man that real music it starts with the artist's conviction right to hip hop you know if you're in it for the money then you probably gonna do something trendy and it might pop, might not. You'll be out of here a year you later. Know, yeah, you might and you might get some traction out of it. You mm-hmm. might you might hang around for a while. But real music is something that is 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 created first by the producer. You know, the producer lays the foundation for the song that you really want to create mm-hmm. unless you already unless you contrive to beat in your head and you structure a song around that pattern but it's usually the producer and once you mold with a producer I only use four basic producers on this generals list too with outside uh production from day one thank you day oh, shout one shout out day one man. yeah thank you day, I'll get one. day one up here too oh yeah, yeah that's my guy and uh remember 
a guy named Remember. He did he did a track on there for, uh, too. But I have a it's mainly produced by Anthem, Eric Lee, mm-hmm. who's who's Eric Lee. His nickname is Anthem. Jay Massey, Rob T, and another cat from Vegas, and it's like the sound it it, it gives you a it gives you a cohesiveness mm-hmm. to not get bored with. It's not the same same rhythm. It's not the same energy. So once the producer provides me with a backdrop to paint and create from, then. I go in and do my thing and I create from a perspective of what would move the people. Right. You know, I'm not so egotistical to where it's like, you know, I want to hear me talk about what I've done and my accomplishments and all that and don't care how nobody feeling about it or feeling it or whatever. You probably wouldn't last that long. So it's music created for everybody who been saying Man, what's up with the East Siders? Trady, when you gonna drop another project? Trady, we need some more music. Trady, Trady, Trady. Trady went in for like 14, 15 months, you know, and let everything really Gave just- everybody the just, answers. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and let everything come together. And y'all gonna love this. I guarantee you this this gonna be a, uh, a project that once it's in your system, it's gonna compete with your favorites for, yeah. for you know for playtime. Yep. I guarantee you that. And uh, I had a real great time making this. Shout out to my Supreme Circle Music Group team, you know, uh, for for helping me uh, cross the T's and dot the I's mm-hmm. and and bring everything to fruition. And you know, all the artists on there that you know that participated. You know, whether you had a major name. Or, you know, your name wasn't that large. You made it to the generals list. And that's because, you know, I regard your lyricism. You know, it's not what, you know, what your standing is in society and all that. You know, if you get down and I respect you, you know, I brought you on this to get down with me. And, you know, everybody did their thing, man. Shout out to all the producers, you know. And shout out to my fans, man. Y'all still riding with me after 20-something years. Yep. You know, I love y'all, man. I love seeing that's y'all two, on that's the streets. That's two zero. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's 20. Like, a lot yeah. of people don't get one summer. <laughs> yeah. 20 years, though. Yeah. You know, let me ask you this, man. Uh, Well, one thing I want to tell you is that you definitely need your own podcast. Because every time I interview you, I'm like, you need your own podcast. Because like, <laughs> right. you, you got so many stories that we could talk well, about. I got day. third degree radio. Do you? On, on Dash. Where? On Dash. Okay. Myself, Cognac the EXO, Guy Tory, and DJ Cell. When does that come on? It comes on Monday, uh, 10 to 12 uh, Pacific Standard Time, AM, 10 AM. Are you guys to playing noon. music or are you just talking? And we're playing music to live, live. Mm-hmm. We live every Monday. Oh, okay. Live from 10 AM to 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. And it's on the Native Rhymes channel on Dash Radio. So, you know, I, I reach okay. out and touch the people once That's a week. Up, I, I give just, them a little. You always just have, like, stories. Like, uh, yeah. a lot of people, like, you interview and it's like they give you one-word answers. And, like, oh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, <laughs> we I, had fun. I, you <laughs> know, I wanted to be a radio personality a long time ago. So I learned what dead air was, mm-hmm. you know, and things of that nature. And I know people... You know, people really want to get to know you as a person besides the music and not just, you know, not what time you go to bed or what you eat for breakfast and Mm -hmm. all that, but just really how you think and feel about different things. So, you know, I know I had some good life experiences, like I had some bad ones as well. Mm -hmm. But just being able to, you know, being able to get out, get out and share you know, some of these fun stories and some of this history. Like with you and Nate Dog getting arrested at yeah. the airport. Oh, man. <laughs> so, how did you and Nate Dog get arrested? But then Takashi, he just he got to walk away. Man, hey, look, I, I assaulted the TSA officer. You know, they, they got assaulted by two two little skinny. Hey, shout out to y'all. Whoever y'all two dudes is that ran up on all them dudes and got loose. They got some heart hey, though. That's hard. Man, look, man. Y'all some real ones, bro. Shout out to y'all. And and all y'all who was out here woofing with this no fly zone and check in and didn't do nothing but run your mouth. Man, look, man. Y'all almost made us take an L, man. <laughs> y'all almost made the dub take an L. So nah. all that social media woofing and all that, come on, man. Back up off that. Real G's handle their business, man. Handle your business. That's right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, 
General's List 2, by the time people see this, it will be in stores. So General's List 2 in stores on all the streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get music at, mm-hmm. it's there. Before I let you go, there's one more thing I got to ask. I need to know Trey D, the General's top five of all time. Top five of all time. Top five dead or alive. Off the top of the dome, it would be Rakim, Tupac, Ice Cube, mm, Crooked Eye. Ooh, that's a good list so far. And hmm, wow, who feel that fifth spot in? We got Nas. We got Let Jay. We got uh, who else? We got. I'd 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 begrudgingly. I'd begrudgingly share that that fifth spot with a combination of both Scarface and Jay Z. Oh, okay, those are good answers. Those are good answers. Yeah, but they, you're in there they too, be, though. It's a they be they be tied for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, those are some real ones right there. Yeah. Well, hey man, Trey D. Thank you, brother. Like all it's love, always bro. like it's always all fun love, when you come man. through, man. So. All love. You know we gonna put it out there yes, on the sir. table. Well, right. Hey. Just- 935 K-Day, Trady, thank you for coming through. 935 K-Day, hip-hop back in the day, Noah Ayala, Trey D, in the general, building. in the building. You like this beat? Uh, here we go. Let's go. No, 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 I'm Ayala, the brother. hardest to spit, regardless of which category, generation, coast of market you pick. Raw as it get, every boy on porn legit. No exception, step aggressive in this off with your shit. Cross with a pit, crooked eye, rock him in the crypts. Shot caller plus the author of the general's list. Still in the bricks, reaching back, extending my grip. Peep at CMG and see we riding thick as a bitch. Thicker than grits and every nigga with us to shit. Cognac certified, probably triples as click. Killing you, Vic, too quick to snitch and flip. In the script, mob style, gunning down, stick his dick in his lips. Mentally sick, fuck a penitentiary stint. I'm addicted to inflicting pain and empty clips. Squeezing the grip till I leave him leaking the stiff. Squeezing the grip till I leave him leaking the stiff. Squeezing the grip till I leave him leaking the stiff. Cuss, and never sleep or slip when I dip. Gangster. Uh, trade it. Uh, Long Beach, what up? 935. Y'all know how we do it. No Ayala. Gangster shit. Hey, man. I like that. Album in stores now. <laughs> General's list General's too. List too. Go get that. Make sure you bang that. 935K there. We out. We out.